All right. Thank you. Thank you for your responses. So today we will study a very short but also quite important lesson. It's about team. So previously, on our big class, we have studied about groups first, right? And last week, we studied about leadership. Today, we study about team. So team is like a, a bridge between group and leadership. So this is where team becomes effective. Now, um, last week we studied about leadership and we studied about different type, different ways people understand and do researches about leadership, right? So we study about, um, you know, like trait theories about leadership. So different people, trait, personality can predict leadership and different behavior as well can tell whether you are a good effective leader or not. And then we study about more modern leadership style like charismatic or transformational leadership. So those are the things that researchers and scientists have studied about leadership. But one thing we have to agree in common is that there's a reason for having a leader in our society. We do not have leaders for nothing, right? And from the clips that we've seen in the previous class, we know that the leader or, or you know, like the society that we are living has a purpose. So what is that purpose? So we are individuals as a social animal, right? We are social animals. So we connect to survive and, and to fight against the outside world, right? So we will we'll fight against the outside forces. And that is why uh, we need a leader. Now, a leader over here will have a position to, you know, to leaders to do something that one person cannot do it, right? Um, and, and he or she has the ability to create our safety feeling inside a circle. That is the purpose of society, of groups, of teams, of what we are. We want to survive and we just figure out that having a leader, a really good leader can be beneficial for our survival mechanism. And if a group of people have a very good team, sorry, if a group of people have a very good leader, that leader can make the group become a team. And today we will see about the team. How is an effective team? Right, so you see everything is connected over here. We have group, and then we have a good leader. Uh, maybe a good leadership style or maybe, you know, it's just the situation, the context fits him to be a leader. Regardless of what, a good leader for a group of people, we have something called a team. So that's what we are going to do today, understanding work team. Um, so the first question we tackle today is why teams are so popular? Why? Yeah, it's a very good question. Why we? Why we? It's pop, more popular. Now, if you look at um, the human beings' history, human has developed from a very uh, simple structure from forage. Sang bang hai lum, forage. Two more agriculture, cultivation, and now it comes to the technology um, era. So from forage, which means sang bang hai lum, to um, agriculture, 
and then to technology. So we have come a very long way from being very simple to now, the technology era, or sometimes we say 4.0. Huh? So right, whatever you want to call. And do you see the pattern here? For forage, now even before forage, we were just individual animals. So we, we come to a, a stage we call forage. So we kind of cooperate with people and fight for the food, right? So one people cannot hunt down an elephant. We need like two, three, or two, a dozen of human beings for hunting down an elephant. That is forage. And it comes to agriculture, when we need more people to cooperate, and then it's come to a technology era where we, only one person cannot handle all of those complexity of technology. We need a big, very great tech, um, organization with great members, great employees in order to control the technology, in order to apply and, and exploit the technology that we already have. So you can see the pattern over here. With our development, we need to become, become more cooperative as a nature, right? With the development of human beings, we tend to become more cooperative. And what is the best way to cooperate other than team, right? Team is the best way to cooperate between human beings. Now, when I say team, in this context, it also includes groups. So basically, people come together for a reason. It's become more and more popular because there's this human nature development. We need more people to do something that one individual cannot achieve. So it's the first first thing over here the first um point teams can achieve fit an individual could never accomplish right something that one person cannot do team are flexible and responsive to change event they can quickly assemble and deploy refocus and disband Effective means to de democratize organization and increase employee involvement. So uh, a lot of benefits for for having a team at the moment in modern eras. Cái ý chính ở cái phần này các bạn là hồi xưa xưa xử là xưa luôn khi nhiều khi mình chưa sinh ra đời cái việc mà mình phải cooperate trở thành team với nhau á là cái chuyện gần như là không cần thiết, sometimes là không cần thiết. Tại vì có những thứ nó quá available để cho với cái sự sinh sống của chúng ta rồi các bạn. Ví dụ như bây giờ à, sự tồn tại một con người nó sẽ yêu cầu là ăn uống đúng không ạ? Rồi sinh hoạt đúng không ạ? Thì ví dụ như cái chuyện ăn uống đi, chỉ cần các bạn một mình các bạn các bạn cũng có thể ăn uống được, các bạn có thể trồng trọc mình được, các bạn có thể canh tác một mình được. Tuy nhiên với cái xã hội hiện tại, cái chuyện mà các bạn làm một mình để ăn uống đôi khi nó là có vấn đề khó rồi bạn không thể không thể mà một mình mà các bạn có thể ăn được mà các bạn phải làm việc chung với là những cái người khác để tạo ra đồ ăn của cải. Hồi xưa các bạn chỉ cần đi ra vườn các bạn hái một cái trái gì đó là các bạn ăn, các bạn chả cần phải hợp tác với ai hết. Nhưng bây giờ càng ngày khan hiếm hơn, đô thị hóa hơn thì để có một cái 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 đồ ăn thì các bạn phải có một công việc công việc các bạn phải làm việc với những cái người khác làm việc trong những cái team và các bạn được trả lương các bạn dùng cái lương để các bạn mua cái trái đó thay vì hồi trước các bạn chỉ cần ra ngoài vườn các bạn hái là có thì bây giờ buộc phải corporate phải làm việc trong team trong nhóm để các bạn có thể có được cái kết quả tương tự à, thì cái ý chính ở đây là team become more and more popular là như vậy Next, <coughs> work team and work groups. Now we come to identify the differences between group and teams. 
Um, we studied group before. Remember what we have in groups? I always remind you, when it comes to group, something you have to remember. Group have something called norms. And then it's have something called conformity, right? There's no people controlling groups. When it comes to team, there is something called leader. The leader. Now, the, the big differences between group and teams have four dimensions. The first dimension is goal. What people come into a group, basically to be able to share some sort of information or to check whether he or she our group mates, he or she, they have some new interesting information or not. But when it comes to team, people have a goal for a common purposes. So they do not come together for just sharing information. They come together to achieve something together that he or she individually cannot achieve. So that is the first difference is a goal. Second, the synergy. The synergy of members inside a group is neutral, sometimes negative, while it's more often become positive in team, which is quite obvious. You want to achieve something together, you have the same shared goal, then you need to be very, very cohesive with each other, right? Otherwise, how can you work together? If you hate people, how can you cooperate with people? You have to like people. The synergy must be positive. But for a purpose of sharing information only, uh, you don't need to be really like people to do that. You can be neutral or sometimes you can hate people, but you still can share information, right? That is the second um, dimension of difference. The third one is accountability. Accountability can be understood as responsibility. Now, when in a group, your own responsibility is your own responsibility. There's nothing connect with other people. But in working teams, your own responsibility has some mutual influence on other people. Because if, you're, if you do not accomplish your part, then probably that the other people will not be able to finish their task. Now think of an assembly line, okay? And this is A, and this is B, and this is C. And the line, the assembly line goes this way. And there, you know, stuff, objects being built on the assembly lines. So you can see from A to B, um, A is responsible for doing something, for doing this, let's say this circle, this body, and then B plays the, um, let's say the head on the body and the C with the hands. So imagine they are assembly uh, puppies or, you know, some toy, right? So the responsibility of, of the, the staff A is not is individual first. However, it is also mutual because if A fail to do, then how can B finish his task, right? If A does not have finished bodies over here, how can B put the heads on the body of the puppies, uh, of, of, sorry, of a, a toy, for example. So you can understand that responsibility or accountability is both individual and mutual. The last one is about the skill. The skill of members, right? Not, it's not the skill of team. The skill of members 
in the work groups, they are often random and varied. So it's quite different from work team. The skills of the people inside a team are often complementary. Okay. So you can understand complementary here. In this case, is Mr. A has a specific skill for A, and it complements the skill of Mr. B, and the same B skill is complementary to Mr. C. So they are working as a team to complement to each other ability. All right. To understand this point, one thing I want to illustrate. This is A, B, C. And they're also working on building this one. This is the final product. This is the final product of a uh, Búp bê tiếng Anh là gì các bạn? I just forget um, the words. It's not puppies, right? Puppies is like a small dog, a, a, a doll, doll, right? Right, a doll. Let's say, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Sometimes my English sucks. It's all right. So let's say they are supposed to build the dolls, um, which is not really good over here, but just suppose this is a, a doll, right? So for this is a teamwork. A teamwork in the way that A, B, and C they complement on the abilities of people. And A here is a group. Now on the top is a team. On the bottom it is a group work. A each A, B, and C individually assembly the doll, all right? So they all do the same thing. So this is working like a group. There is no cooperation. They, 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 they do things same. Now, a bit further information. Usually when people work in group, the skill of people are random and varied, which means that A can produce like eight pieces of dough per hour. B can produce, let's say five. And C can produce six. That is, in total, this group ABC can produce of uh, 19, right? Now, for a team, because A focuses on his own specialty, his own skill, he is very good at making A. Um, it's making the, the, you know, the head of the doll. And he can produce like up to 15 heads per hour. And B can produce 19. And C can produce 21, for example. Um, so the numbers of, I'm, I just, um, I just um, think of the numbers. They're not actually accurate, but it gives you the understanding of how groups and teamwork. So that this is an example to um, illustrate the, uh, the skills and accountability between teams and group. Huh? All right. So I have covered the differences between group work and teamwork already. Uh, are you with me so far?
All right. Thank you for your responses. Um, I do mess up with my drawings. But I hope that you will not mind. Now we have four types of teams. We might have more types of team, but those are the most popular types of teams that we have. We have problem solving team. We have cell managed team, cross functional team and virtual team. So four type one, two, three. No. Three and four. Now for problem solving, the name is quite straightforward. We solve problems. So that, that is the reason why we come together as a team. So what kind of problems could possibly be? Like we need to solve problem how to increase the sales of this month because the report is not showing very good numbers. And we want to assemble a team of good salespeople, experienced salesmen of how to increase the sales. So that is a team of problem solving. And they can solve a, whatever the problem is we can have for the as long as we have the as long as we have the person who can work together to solve the problem, then we can create a problem solving team. So that's the first type of, of team. We come together to solve a problem. Now, what if there is no problem for we to solve? What can we do? Should we need team anymore? The answer is to yes, we still need a team. And in this case, we will need a self-managed team. So with that problem, there is no problem. What does the self-managed team do? Because the name is very confusing, right? Self-managed. Um, now let's think that's your boss. Let's think your boss assign your division or your department um, to you know to work together as a team, of course, and to operate like normal. And usually, in order to to operate like a, like a very structured normal team, you need something called a supervisor or a team leader no, no a supervisor right usually you need the supervisor to you know um you to plan for your what you're gonna do different individuals what are they gonna do plans for individual or you know like scheduling and you know like allocate resources So those are the very, you know, administrative things that a supervisor that a supervisors will do for a team. Now a self-managed team do not solve problem, but they do those things, and they tend to eliminate the role of a supervisor. So they know that they need to work together. So they will say, that, hey, um, let's work together and work together and see what kind of future plan for each of us and how we can schedule our work um, timetable and how can we can allocate the resources. So self-managed team tend to eliminate the responsibility of a supervisor. That's why it's for self-managed. Team members inside the team manage themselves and that is also called a team, right? So this self-managed team doesn't solve any problem, but they do work together. They do work together for a common purpose is to maintain the team, maintain the function that is originally desired by the supervisor. Or, um, yeah, or, or the manager, something like that. Okay. That is why it's called self-manage. Now we have another two types. 
of team. First is cross-functional. Now, if you look at the picture over here, you will see that this is on the right, sorry, on the left side, it is more like a organizational structure chart, right? Which a very clear hierarchy they come together for. Now, if you look at this, let's say this is box number one, two, three, four, five, right? So what, let's say one is finance, the um, head of finance, and two is marketing, and three is like sales, four is like production, and five is like Um, what can another department be in a generic company you can think of? Finance, marketing, sales, production. Um, it's a human resource, okay? So those are like five departments. And below those five departments, we have you know, like subdivision and things like that. A cross-functional team consists of the people. It they are at the same hierarchical level. So in this case, for example, we have the head of finance, head of marketing, head of sales, head of production, head of HR, will come together and create a cross-functional team for whatever the reason is. The cross-functional team doesn't mention the purpose of the of a team. But this is rather than how the team operates. So in this cross-functional, it's always about same hierarchical personnel coming together and work as a team. Now it sounds like a project team. However, um, because of the same hierarchical level thing, people are, are same on the same height. There's no you know, big boss and there's no followers over here. They're all of the bosses. And when they come together to, to work as a team, there are pros and cons, okay? There's pros and cons when things like this happens. The pros is that we can take advantage of the expertise of each people because they are quite different in terms of how they work. So we have a diversity in terms of point of view. And for the cons or the disadvantage, we have quite some disadvantages of cross-functional. It's quite complex, right? When different people from different departments come together for working together, then who will be the leader? Because working in team always need the leaders and who will be the leader? And the answer is quite difficult to answer. To be able to identify the leader in this case is not easy because they are all boss. Then they would very would quite difficult to listen to each other, right? That's the first thing. Identifying a leader is quite difficult. Second, because they come from a very diverse background, make them work together, speak the same language can be different, can be difficult. And it takes time for those people with different background to get used to each other and, and the development stage of this cross-functional team seems to take longer than normal, all right? Those are the things that you need to remember when you want to create the cross cross-functional team. First, um, understand that for those people to find a leader is going to be challenging. And second, it's going to take quite a long time for people to plan into each other as a normal team. Now, the last team that's um, emerged and it's become more and more important nowadays in the COVID-19 
um, situation. It's called virtual team. Now, for virtual team, I think it's quite obvious and straightforward in terms of how it works, right? So we work virtually online via tools like Microsoft Teams, as we are doing right now. Now, when you want people to work virtually, I want to ask, what is your opinion when you are forced to work virtually? Do you like it or not? Imagine that you are working for a company. Do you like working virtually or you are you like working at the office? Now, for most of people who have been working before, working virtually, working at home, I think you're saying for answer. For people who have worked, have been working, right? So people have working experience so far. When they are offered to work at home virtually, not people not a lot of people like that even though working at home create a um, you know the easy way of working there's no really clear um, supervision from people which is very you know flexible to work however not a lot of people enjoy working at home because they find that it's quite distracting than work at home Sometimes their children can be very annoying, for example. So working at home is a way, but it's not always a best way, right? Now, if you are a manager or the leaders, and when you create a virtual team, there's three things you need to remember when it comes to virtual team. The first, because people work virtually and they do not see face to face, you need to build a trust, right? Without trust, people will not be able to work virtually very well. So build a trust climate of your team. The second thing about the virtual team is that you need to monitor All right, so monitor the work quite closely. Now, because we do not see each other quite well, the role of the leader in the virtual team is to monitor whatever everybody is doing. In order to, thirdly, we give rewards. Oops. Sorry, we rewards, but publicly, publicly. So that's the, the three things that you want to do if you are if you are a leader of um, Virgil team. Build a trust climate. You monitor the activities quite closely so that. People are not, you know, running away from the task. And then if you have the monitor data, you know people are doing something, you can reward people, but people, but reward people publicly. So that's um, they do they the virtual team are not um, invisible, right? We're working virtually means that we're working quite invisibly, and if the, you do not reward or announce something publicly, then it's basically a, a invisible working team, not virtual. All right. So those are the uh, the four common types of team that we usually see in the market. Now let's come to how can we create an effective team, regardless of the type of the form of the team we are working. So there are three components: CCP. Context, composition, and process. 
So there are quite a few points over here, right? There are quite a few points over here. So we will, we will look at each, let's say each box is dimension to see what we can do with each of the points over there to make the field more effective. The first is team context, right? CCP, remember? Context, composition, and process. First, see the context. The context refers to what factors determine whether teams are successful. So, adequate resources, leadership structure, climate of trust, and performance evaluation and rewards. We'll go into deeper, huh? Sorry. Adequate resources are quite straightforward. If you do not give enough resources for a team to operate, how can they operate successfully, right? Imagine a team of five fighter. Okay. Five fighter is a team that is very significant because they always need to work in team. They cannot work individually because of the nature of the job. So those firefighters, what can they do if they are not given enough of equipment to fire back the fire, right? If you do not give enough or adequate resources, people will get frustrated. Like, how can we do what we are supposed to do as a team? So the first thing in terms of context is to give people adequate resources. Otherwise, do not make people a team. If you make people a team, give people enough resources. First thing. A second, leadership and structure. Now, if you put people into a team, make sure that the team has some sort of leader. All right. Do not let the team operate individually. If you put people into a team, If you put people into a team, make sure there is already a leader um, you want to desi uh, design for. Give me a second, please. Okay, I'm back. Um, thank you for your time. So I'm working at home. A lot of um, you know influences forces, which I will not like. Now, um, next leadership and structure. I already mentioned. If you put people into a team, make sure that there is a leadership already designed, and as well as the structure is already designed. Okay. And in order for a team to success, to succeed, sorry, we need to have a climate of trust. Now, a team will not work. A team will never work if there is no trust. All right. So build up the uh, climate of trust first. Um, and performance evaluation and rewards. Uh, this is the last part of the team context. Now, one of the things that we usually forget when we work in a team is that people need to be rewarded just like every other groups, all right? People want to 
feel deserve for whatever they perform. So when you create a team, not only you need to create the leadership, the structure, the trust, but also the how how can you evaluate the performance of the members in that, and how you will reward the performance respectively. All right. If you create a team with all of those factors, but the rewards and the performance evaluation is like people will get really, really pissed off, right? So I work for you, I have trust for you, but you do not reward me um, as my, I, what I perform. I believe it's too low. I, I believe I deserve more than what this reward you give me. So those are the things that you need to prepare for a team for it to succeed. That's team context. Now let's come to team composition. How should teams be staffed? It's about the people inside a team. Um, and, and when we say about people inside a team, there will be two types of people. All right. Inside a team, there will be a leader and a follower. Now the abilities of members affect the effectiveness of the team very well. However, the ability of the leader is also very influential, it's very substantial. Now a very smart and proactive leader can cover for the not so smart followers or members, right? So the, 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 the importance of having a good leader of a smart, a competent and high ability leader is as important as having high ability followers and members. Now personality. Last week we studied about the personality trait of the leader. And it applies quite the same for the followers on and the members. For the team members, the personality will influence the effectiveness of the team as well. So if you remember the ocean, we have four team leaders, right? For the leader, we need openness to experience, we need conscientiousness, and we agree uh, agree upon this. Right? No, it's not not at all. In fact, extraversion. Huh? To predict a leader, we need the extraversion, openness, um, conscientiousness, and agreeableness. Now, for the followers or for the members, you also need some types of um consent conscientiousness right the first thing and we also need to have um in terms of ocean the openness experience is also part of um the indicator of effective effective team Okay, so personality has influences over team effectiveness. Now, allocating roles. Talking about roles, we can have a look at over here, the key roles of the team. So we can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So here we have nine roles of teams that can possibly be. Now, 
You want to have the people, the members that can cover the rows. Each can cover one row. Or one people can cover many rows. All right, one person can handle many rows rather than many people is handling one row. All right, it's different from this. We this one we don't want it to happen. No, no, right? We want each person handling one row or one person handling many rows. This is okay. This is okay. But we don't want many people handling one row. All right. So you can think of many types of roles out there. This is one example. Nine roles in a team. And you want to allocate people. Or you want to recruit people. You want to manage people in a way that one people handling one role. All right. So allocating roles. And for people inside our team who we call members, we need diversity as well. Now, we do not, we cannot run away from diversity, guys. Diversity is something we need to accept. But diversity is also a good thing. Right? We already know that diversity can create conflict sometimes. Now, but we want to have a control conflict. We want to have a control conflict so that the conflicts can create the development. With our conflicts, there is no development, right? Because you are so irrigated irritated about something. You so hate about something, you decide to, oh, I will change it into something better so that is conflict leads to development and a certain level of diversity in our organization foster the diversity foster the development like that which is a good thing um the next thing about how people inside a team can create an effective team is cultural differences. Now, cultural differences is become more and more important. Um, it's the same like diversity, basically. Um, not everyone is sensible to cultural differences. Some people are very sensitive in, in terms of cultural so, uh, differences, some are not. Um, but as a manager or a team leader, you need to be very careful with the cultural differences because it will create some, you know, uh, some ups and downs some differences in terms of how the team will perform. It's not a big deal. Um, but it needs to be well controlled for it. Now the size of the teams also matter. And usually they say that from nine to 10 is like the optimal size of a team to operate, right? So nine to ten is is small. It's a it's a small team, but it is also quite optimal for a team to operate. A bigger than that will make this more problematic in terms of controlling people. And smaller than that will create um, the shortage of people inside a team. The team with less people, they would just tend to perform worse compared to nine to ten people okay um 
Um, and last, in order to make a team effective, you need to be aware of member preferences, which means that not everyone is a team player in a team, right? Some people would prefer working alone inside a team. So when you select a team, you do not want to include those person into our team because it will hinder the performance. We work together, not individual, right? So if you are controlling all of those factors over here, you will know that how the members you want to put into a team. OK, you want a high ability of members so they are capable of doing things. They want their personality to have like high score in openness to experience and um, conscientiousness. You want um, the member to fill up the roles inside the team. You want to have a certain level of diversity inside the team. You want to have a certain level of control cultural differences you you don't want it to be very a big big deal and you want the team to be from nine to ten people only and you do not want to recruit people who are not a team player okay that is the team composition how to make the team effective now the last is about a team process The last thing about how to make an effective team. Let's take a look at team processes. Now, when you run the team, you want one or two people to have to be on the same boat, right? Every people on the same boat. Every member is on the same boat. And they are selling. OK. Things like that. Um, you want to have, when I say to have us on the same boat, I mean they need to know the common plan and purposes. Or, you know, like set a goal here in this. They need to know the, the goals. But bigger than goals is like the, the whole purpose of the team, like why we come together. People come together for a reason, right? So they need to know the purpose, the reason for being here in and, and being in a team like this. Now, extra, when people already know why they come together, the purpose of the group, usually effective team members will have something called reflex, reflexivity, meaning that they will be able to adjust their behavior based on the environment and the purposes. So they adjust their purpose when necessary. We put people together for a common purpose. However, the reflexivity is happens when you adjust the purpose, the common plan according to the situation when there is a net necessary so adapt let's say so they come together for a purpose but if that purpose is not suitable then we adapt and we change to another purpose uh, so that is called reflexivity right now to more specifically more specifically, we need to we need to to set up a team with specific goals. But again, huh? specific goals is very powerful team. Uh, sorry, is a powerful tool to control people. The goal should be specific, achievable, and challenging enough. Remember. Now, we have some new terminology over here. Team efficacy. All right, so we want to build the confidence of the team. Um, 
as a team, you need to build the confidence of a whole team. So they are confident doing whatever the purpose of the team tells you to do. That's called team efficacy. Now team identity, meaning that when um, when a person asks you which team that you are in, which team are you in? You will be confident to say that I'm in the team A because you are identify yourself with this team A. That is called team identity. A high team identity will make the team member so proud to be inside the team because they really they are not individuals anymore but they are the member of a team that is high team identity a low team identity will not give people that sense of belongingness okay the sense of belongingness Now we have team cohesion. Sorry, team cohesion. So cohesion is like uh, connected emotionally and, and intensively. Team cohesion. And you want you do want to have the team cohesion as high as possible. Right? Now what happened when in a team we have team identity with but there's no team cohesion so yes but no here yes team identity but team cohesion now in this case every member inside a team identity will be very proud being in the team however they are not in the team because of the connection of the members they are in the team because of whatever the the team is maybe the name of the team maybe the purpose of the team i don't know so they proud they say they are a part of the team but they are not really connected because they have no team cohesion so in this scenario it's not a very good one in a good and effective team we want to have both team identity and team cohesion Okay. Now mental models. The mental model is how people all agree in working towards the goal. Okay. Or it's a team members knowledge and belief about how the work gets done by the team. So it's about understanding belief. If every individual inside the team remember assembly lines um, example, the team consists of ABC employee. Now, when the team has a mental model inside their mind, they all know that in order to create a doll, This is how it should be done from A to B to C. That is mental model. People all agree on the process of how to get things done, how to get the goal done from A to B to C. And you want the mental model to happen inside every members of the team. They all agree on how to get things done as a team. Now, in some situation, in some you know like problematic like crisis area, um, crisis, crisis situation, sometimes a men mental model um, is not exists anymore inside um, the the team. Different people will think of different way to work, so the mental model disappear. 
However, you we want to keep the mental models um, consistent and similar between the uh, employees. The conflict level, okay, it's coming to the end of the class today. Of course, we will have conflicts inside our team because we are all human beings and we will not run away from conflicts. However, you want to keep the conflict at the um, non-personal level, all right? We want to keep the conflict at a non-personal, or we call that task conflict. As long as that is a task conflict, then it's okay. We don't want a relationship conflict. Personal conflict has nothing to do with the performance of the team, and we don't want, don't want that to happen. Personal conflict leads to the destruction of the connection of team members. So we keep the relationship conflicts away and we want to keep task conflict close to us, all right? And the last thing about working as a team, as well as working in a group, we have already studied about social loafing. We don't want people to, hit, to, to, you know, to hide and not doing something, anything inside a team. So we want each of the members will be responsible for some public and very specific goals of a team so that he or she will not run away from his responsibility. Otherwise, people tend to do social law thing. All right. Social law thing là tình trạng khi mà có 10 người làm việc nhưng mà chỉ có chín người thực sự làm việc thôi, còn người kia không làm việc nhưng mà vẫn được che chở, vẫn được uh, không bị phát hiện thôi. No social laughing. Thì khi mà làm việc trong team á, với một số lượng từ 9 đến 10 người tương đối ít á, thì một người leader tốt thì họ hoàn toàn có thể xét ra những cái luật để giảm tình trạng social laughing đó. Rồi. Right. So those are the things we need to consider when we want to create an effective team. Now a team will be not a team without a team players, right? So team members, team players, whatever you want to call. So how to how to find them? We can find them by select the team players or we can train them. If they are not team player, we can train them we create them from you know like a very individualist to team player and we want to reward them to be a good team player all right so there are three things if we identify the already team players then we hire people we select it if the team players is not yet identified we can still train them to create a team player and we use incentive to make sure they are good team player, which means rewarding, all right? Now, before we end the class today, I want you to ask yourself, is it always good to work in team? People tend to overuse team as a matter of fact, there's problems that can solve individually quite effectively, more effectively than working in team. But it just, sometimes we just overuse team. So before we create a team or we want to manage a team, ask yourself, can the work be done better by one person? Does the work create a common goal or a purpose? or are the members of the group interdependent? Now answer those questions for yourself and you can know 
whether you, we should organize a team or not. All right. So that is the end of the class today. It's uh, it's very simple about team. And um, do you have any questions so far? So let's wrap it up. So at first we know that's group and team. What are the differences, right? In four dimension. The second between group and team we have um, effective, uh, you know, four types of team, right? And then after we know different types of team, we know how how to make an effective team. Using CCP, you know, context, composition, and processes. And last, should we need a team or not? Team player. We can create team player, we can train them, we can select, we can hire, or we can give in, in an in, incentive to make them a good team player. And cuối cùng là mình có cần có team hay không? So that's, that's it. That is the um, thing as we study about team today. So if you do not have any question, then um, let's end the class here and uh, enjoy your weekend because this is the um, s Friday already and uh, see you next week and online next week we study online as well bye bye See you soon, Hugh, and um, everyone, please take care of your health. Uh, till we see each other again.